Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. As always, you can contact us on our website at www.lanessafarms.com. Send us an email at customerservice at lanessafarms.com or give us a call or send us a text at the number listed below. Today, we're continuing our feed and nutrition series talking about mixing feed at home. You can help us to improve our ratings by sharing our videos with friends or family members that you think may be interested in the topics we discuss. As always, feel free to contact us with your feedback or comments. We really appreciate them. As a matter of fact, all of the videos that you see here on our channel are made specifically for customers just like you based off of questions that you ask. Don't forget to subscribe and we really appreciate those thumbs up. Without further delay, let's get started talking about mixing feed at home. We recently received an email from James in Greencastle, Indiana, and James wants to know what we do about feed here on Lonasa Farms, specifically uh, the grain feed for our youngsters, our little lambs and our goat kids that we have here on the farm. Uh, James said that he buys all of his feed pre-bagged at the big box stores and it's getting to be almost $20 a bag in some cases, very expensive, and he wants to know if there's anything he can do to help cut the cost down or perhaps get a better quality of feed. Uh, this is a great question. This is something that we wrestled with ourselves when we first um, started the farm. Uh, it was costing us an arm and a leg uh, to creep feed our lambs and goat kids in the spring and we didn't know exactly what was going into the feed. In the end, we finally settled on mixing the feed ourselves here on the farm. So today's video is going to be a tutorial, uh, if you will, to explain to you exactly how we go about mixing the feed here on our farm in small batches and what we put in it. We're gonna include some recipes and some other information for you that you may find helpful. And hopefully, uh, for those of you that are just getting started, uh, this will help you save a whole bunch of money and it gives you the quality and peace of mind knowing that you know exactly what is going into the feed that you are feeding your livestock. So here it is. Uh, this is our secret weapon here on our small farm. It is a three and a half cubic foot cement mixer from the good folks at Harbor Freight. Uh, you can pick these up for about oh, $200 roughly, plus Harbor Freight always has their uh, coupons for like 20% off or 35% off, something like that. So you're looking at eh, maybe 175 bucks for a mixer. Um, I can't tell you how well this mixer actually works for mixing cement. That's a lot of weight, but for feed it works just fine. Um, this is just the right size for us. With our small farm, we can usually make uh, 55 gallons of uh, feed in you know two or three uh, cycles with uh, our mixer and it, it works really good for us so this is what we would recommend now obviously if you are gonna have a lot larger operation you can get a PTO powered mixer um, that can run on your tractor or something like that but uh, for all intents and purposes uh, this should be just fine for the average person out there especially uh, for those of you uh, that are watching our videos so here's our end product. This is where we want to end up. But before we can talk about the end product, we have to talk about what goes into our feed. What is it that you need to get? Well, there's no real difference between what you buy in the store and what you're going to make at home. Um, that is to say, there's no real difference in the basic components. All feed generally tends to have a base made up of corn. Now, the higher the protein percentage, the higher amount of soybean is usually in it. So Soybean is very, very high in protein. It's almost 40% protein, um, whereas corn is only 7%. So when the feed manufacturers want to up the protein in the feed, they generally tend to add more soybean. Now, the feed that we make here on our farm is a corn base. Uh, we add some oats, um, some fiber in the form of soybean holes or beet pulp, and we also add soybean meal. 
then you have to add your vitamins and nutrients depending on the breed of animal um, and you can also cheat a little bit uh, there are specialty feed stores out there that make a pre-formulated pellet uh, such as a 40 percent lamb pellet or a 40 percent goat pellet that already has uh, 40 percent protein uh, in the pellet itself and it already contains all the extra vitamins and nutrients that you need for your specific breed that you're talking about. Now, uh, we also can add different components. Uh, some people add things like limestone to help uh, control the pH. Other people tend to add things like worming agents, antibiotics, probiotics, um, you name it. But generally speaking, uh, on our farm, corn, oats, uh, a form of fiber and soybeans including the vitamins and nutrients now there's also binders that we have to have um, these binders are what holds our feet together and allows an even mix of the extra vitamins and nutrients that we add to the feet these binders are things like molasses um, and soybean oil and those are the two main components that we use in our feed here uh, on our farm so for those of you that are going to be mixing feed at home, what we're going to do next is we're going to get into the really not so fun part of making feed and that's the math. And this is going to show you what you need to add and in what ratios you need to add these uh, feeds in order to get to the protein percentage that you want. Now. Uh, general uh, everyday feed at the store is going to be anywhere from 12 to 14 percent um, for the specialty feeds that you're going to be feeding uh, lambs or kids you're going to want to bump that up uh, to closer to 18 or here on our farm we actually feed a 20 percent protein uh, mix for show animals it's going to be the same thing you're going to be up in the 18 to 20 percent um, area uh, again, it's going to depend on the animal that you're feeding, um, what your veterinarian recommends, uh, what you want, and how fast you want them to grow. Okay, so here's a great example. Uh, here we have a feed that's made up of six parts of corn, two parts of oats, and one part of soybean meal. And as you can see, uh, all this is going to add up to a grand total of 12.8%. Uh, but what we need to talk about is how did we figure that out what's the math that's involved uh, that tells us that yeah if I mix the six parts of corn two parts of oats and one part of soybean meal um, how am I coming up with a 12.8 percent and so that's what we're going to talk about right now the first thing that you need to know is when we talk about parts um, we're talking about equal uh, distribution so if I say parts um, that means uh, an equal measurement. So parts can be pounds, it can be ounces, it can be grams. It has to be something equal in measurement. So it can't be scoops. Um, you can't say, you know, six scoops of corn, two scoops of oats, and one scoop of soybean meal. And the reason is, is because one scoop of corn is not going to weigh the same as one scoop of soybean meal. Um, due to the way that they're made uh, and the density, they're going to be completely different. So remember, uh, when we talk about uh, these units, these parts, it, it means they're equal to one another in, by a ratio of measurement. Then if you look off to the right, you're going to see the 7%, 17%, and 40%. And what that represents is that represents the protein per part. So in one part corn, uh, there is 7% protein. In one part soybean meal, there is 40% protein. So that basically just says no matter how much of that one uh, individual component you have, the percentage of protein in it will be um, that number. So what I did was over here on the right hand side you can see that I took all the total protein parts and I'm going to add them together. So look off here to the right and you'll see we have six of the sevens. This represents our six parts of corn which are made up of seven percent protein per part. Then you can see we have our two parts of oats, which are made up of 17% per part. 
And last but not least, we have our one part of soybean meal, which is made up of 40% per part. When we add all of these protein parts together, we come up with a grand total of 116. Now on the left hand side, you can see that we've listed out our total parts. A little bit more simple math, but still we need to do it. Uh, so you can see we have six uh, plus two plus one, and this represents our six parts of corn, our two parts of oats, and our one part of soybean meal. When we add these total parts together, we come up with a grand total of nine. Six plus two is eight, plus one is nine. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that total protein and divide it by our total parts. So 116 divided by nine. And as you can see, that is going to give us 12.8 repeating, uh, which is going to be about 12.8, 12.9% protein and this is how we gather the total amount of protein that will be in this feed if we mix it up in this exact ratio. All right, so just for the sake of example, let's take a look at another one. In this case, uh, we are adding up to get a total of 20.3% protein, and we're using a few extra ingredients that we didn't use before, uh, such as soybean hulls, beet pulp, and a 40% uh, commodity pellet. Uh, in this case, uh, this is one of the exact um, setups and recipes that I use for my lambs. Uh, and the 40% pellet here represents um, a pellet that I buy through Hunter Nutrition. Um, it is a 40% pellet that already has all of the nutrients added into it. So basically everything a lamb could need is added into it. You can also buy these um, pre-made for goats, uh, horses, pigs, whatever. Uh, most of your specialty feed producers in your area should have these pre-mixed pellets already made for you. We're gonna do the exact same thing we did before. As you can see, I've added up my total protein parts on the right uh, for a grand total of 244. On the left-hand side, I've added up my total number of parts together for a total of 12. And then we just complete our simple math here at the bottom, just like before. So in this case, the 244 divided by 12 is going to give us 20.3 repeating or about 20.3 or 20.2 percent protein. You can see here from the video that we save old feed bags to put our feed in. Um, you're going to want to try to buy as much of your feed in bulk as possible. Uh, to give you an example, if you get a tractor supply and buy corn, you're going to be looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, $7 for a bag of corn uh, for a 50 pound bag. The actual price out on the street right now is uh, $3 and change per 56 pounds. Uh, so just to give you an idea, you're much better off going to your local feed mill um, and buying in bulk from them if you can. Uh, just something to keep in mind. So uh, we have all of our dry ingredients uh, and then all we end up doing is you find that magic ratio. Uh, you know, we use either kilograms or pounds as our parts depending on uh, what works best for us. And then you're going to want to put your dry ingredients in the mixer uh, and just mix your dry ingredients together at first just to get a nice blend. Now keep in mind uh, that the mixer is going to have to be able to run at over a 45 degree angle tilted to the side otherwise the paddles aren't going to mix it um, in, a, uh, in a way that's going to give you a good blend. So keep that in mind. Um, you may want to be tempted to over pack the mixer in order to get more um, more accomplished uh, for every time that you're running it but really uh, you're gonna want to do as much as you can to where you can get a good uh, 45 degree or more tilt on the mixer without it spilling out the front um, so the first thing like I said that we're gonna do we're gonna mix our dry ingredients get them mixed up well and then we are going to add a little bit of our oil complex to it uh, and the reason we're doing this is we want to be able to put this oil in there as a binder so when we add any powdered ingredients it's going to help for that powder to stick to the feed 
and give the feed an even consistency. Uh, in our case, we add biomoss, uh, and biomoss is a prebiotic. Um, it helps to protect them against bacterial infections, and this is the way we get around using antibiotics in our feed. We do not use antibiotics in our feed. Um, we find that the biomoss, the prebiotic, uh, works great, uh, helps protect against E. coli and other uh, nasty microorganisms, and it does just fine. Uh, but the biomass is an example of a powder, and if we don't add this oil in, uh, that biomass is not going to be able to stick to the feed itself. It'll end up settling out, and then you're not going to get an even consistency. So we're going to add the biomass after we've mixed the feed for a little bit with the oil. Um, the oil that we use is uh, Hunter Nutrition. Um, show pro gold which is a soybean oil mix it's got a little bit extra fat in it you can use just regular soybean oil you can use grapeseed oil um, any kind of oil uh, works fine we just use the show pro gold we feel that it works better so we're going to mix our feed with the oil get it coated then add the biomass or any other powders if you're going to add limestone um, if you're going to add a free choice mineral um, after it's been coated with oil, this is the time that you're going to want to add that powder. You're going to mix it up some more, uh, let it mix thoroughly, then we're going to stop. Um, at this point we stop, uh, we tilt the machine upright, get all of your feed nice and level, make a well in the feed, um, just like if you were mixing with flour at home or something like that. And then you're going to pour your molasses in. I always add my molasses last um, because it just keeps things cleaner um, and it keeps things more evenly spread out. So add the molasses into the well. And then what I do is I cover up the molasses with some of the feed so it's actually buried turn the machine on and then quickly tilt it down to its side and the reason I do this is because if you just pour the molasses in there what happens is when you go to tilt the machine uh, back down to the over 45 degree angle that molasses is going to tend to run out and it's going to want to stick to the sides of the mixer and it will just make a mess so remember make a well pour the molasses in cover it up and then tilt it and that, it, it, that's really it. Uh, mix it till you get to a nice consistency. Um, and then you're going to uh, just tip it and dump it out into, we use 55 gallon uh, trash cans and, and you should be good. Um, just for your information, generally uh, we use between two and three cups of molasses and we use between a cup and a cup, of half, cup and a half of oil. Um, again, you're going to have to find out what works best for you and uh, what gives you the consistency that you want. This is not an exact science. This is something that you're just going to have to play with and find out um, what works best for you. Things to consider. Um, try to buy your feed in bulk as much as possible. Uh, when you buy your feed in bulk, it's going to help you out. It's going to help you to save money. Um, the other thing is, is um, consider pH. If you're adding tons and tons of uh, acidic things such as molasses, you may want to consider adding um, some limestone uh, in order to drive that pH up and get you more in the alkaline area. If you want to know about pH in feed and how it affects the animals, I highly, highly suggest that you go on our website. We have an awesome article on there about pH. Uh, go to www.lanessafarms.com and there is an awesome article on there that will tell you all about pH and the animal and how it affects them. The other thing that I would consider um, and that you need to consider is a lot of the commodity pellets, that pre-mixed 40% pellet that we were talking about, um, some of those have added ingredients that you need to be extremely cautious of. Uh, some of these added ingredients can be like anticoxidiosis medication, uh, and that can be very, very detrimental to the health of some of your animals. So you have to know what's in the feed that you're feeding your animals. Do not take that for granted. 
I will give you an example. Um, Anti-coccidiosis medication is deadly um, to horses and to alpacas and llamas. So if you're mixing up this feed and it's intended for your goats or for your sheep and your horse or your llama or alpaca gets into it, it can potentially kill them. Also, uh, goats need a lot of copper. So goat premix will have a lot of copper. If your sheep get into this, it can kill your sheep. So again, please, please, please read your labels on your material, know what you're giving your animals and keep track of it in a responsible manner. Uh, the other thing I would tell you um, is that you have to be very careful um, when you're feeding your animals as to how much you're giving them. Um, if you train them to have free choice, they tend not to overeat. But if you forget and leave a gate open to where adults can get in and get into the feed, they may overeat, especially if you've been limiting them. So that's something uh, important to consider as well. Uh, other than that, you know, it's it's a, a, a learning process. It's something that you um, are just going to have to play with and figure it out. But hopefully this will give you all of the steps and all of the tricks and tips that you need in order to get started. Um, we find that when we mix our feed for a 20% protein mix, it's costing us approximately uh, $9 per 50 pounds that it's made. Uh, if we were to buy this off the shelf in the store, um, we would be somewhere in the 16 to $19 range per 50 pounds. So that just gives you an idea how much money that you're going to save. And when you're feeding a lot of animals, uh, this is uh, a whole lot of money that's back in your pocket that you can use um, for something else. The other, uh, I almost forgot, the one other question that we get from a lot of people is, well, how do you know what the protein percentage is in your feed? Um, usually that's always on the label. So we didn't just pull these numbers out of thin air. You know, 7% protein per corn, um, it should say that on your label. Um, the internet obviously is a good example of this as well. So uh, you're just gonna have to do a little research and find out what the protein percentage is. And if it's not on the label, um, if you're buying it in a bag, say you're buying it in bulk and you need to know, just look it up on the internet. A uh, simple Google search of how much protein is in you know, soybean meal is gonna tell you. So uh, that's it. I hope that you found this video helpful. Um, I know we threw a lot of information at you in an extremely short period of time. Uh, so if you have questions, let us know. Our goal here is uh, we are extremely hopeful that this will help you to save money and give your animals better quality feed, um, better quality nutrition, and uh, you're gonna end up with better animals in the long run. Also, this is gonna help you with your sales because you're gonna be able to look your customers in the eye and say, I know exactly what my animal is getting. We mix it ourselves here on the farm um, and I can show you. And I feel personally that that makes a, a big difference uh, when we market our animals. We greatly appreciate you watching our video. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Lanessa underscore farms. We appreciate your feedback. If you have questions, comments, concerns, please contact us. We will see you next time.